What's up everybody, it's Charles. Today we are installing wheel spacers on the Golf R. All right, the hot topic of wheel spacers. Are they good? Are they safe? Is it gonna make your car flip over? We're gonna be installing front and rear on the Golf R today. We're going 10 millimeters up front and 15 millimeters in the back. Now you may be thinking, Charles, why are you installing these wheel spacers? Is it worth it? Uh, are they gonna damage your car? The main reason we're installing these is cosmetic. We're gonna bring these back wheels and front wheels out just a little bit to improve the overall look of the car. Now, we may change the handling characteristics of the car a little bit, but 10 millimeters and 15 millimeters aren't really that much. This should be just enough to bring the wheel and tire assembly out to sort of be flush-ish, flush-ish, flush-ish? I like flush-ish flush-ish with the fender line. Some other reasons people run wheel spacers are running wider tires or wider wheel and tire assemblies. We may also add them for things like clearing a bigger brake kit. Perhaps we're adding a wide body kit to the vehicle and we want that proper fitment of wheel, tire assembly, and fender. Or we're installing aftermarket wheels and the offset is different, so we need to push the wheel out just a little bit. We are going to be installing these from Shop Dap. My man Paul hooked these up for me. Appreciate you, Paul. Let's look at these as well as some wheel spacers that you definitely don't want to use. All right, so here are the spacers that we are going to be installing on the Golf R. These, of course, are from Shop Dap. This is the rear kit. These are 15 millimeters, so they're going to bring our wheels out just a little bit. Notice that we have the hub-centric ring for the wheel to mount. We also have the hub-centric center for us to mount this onto the hub. In addition to that, of course, we have our longer wheel bolt to compensate for adding the spacer onto the hub. Here we have our standard length wheel bolt. This is actually a locking wheel bolt. And here is our extended wheel bolt for our spacers. You can see quite a bit of difference in the thread length. We need to make sure we have extended threads to compensate for adding the spacer in. If we don't replace the wheel bolts, we are not gonna have enough threads. Check out how little thread would actually bite by the time we got the wheel on, it would probably be almost nothing. Compare these wheel spacers, nice hub centric, perfectly aligned holes, little notch so that when we are ready to take it off, it comes right off with these things. These are what you get at the generic parts store. These, look at how big the opening is, would not fit correctly on this car. For comparison, look at that. Now, this is probably a different bolt pattern than what I would need as well, but this is the kind of stuff you can just buy doesn't come with any extra wheel bolts, doesn't come with studs, lug nuts, anything like that. So if you're gonna add spacers, I would not recommend something like this. These are gonna be a much better solution, things that are actually made for the wheels you're running, the hub diameter, and the wheel bolt pattern. Speaking of wheel bolts, let's bring back our factory length bolt. There's something I wanna make sure I point out to you guys. When we're thinking about wheel spacers and wheel bolts or lug nuts and factory or aftermarket wheels, there's something a lot of people don't think of, and that's the seat of the bolt or the lug nut. Notice this is curved. This is what's called a ball seat. Most VW Audi wheels are ball seat wheels. That means there's a corresponding rounded part on the wheel that allows us to properly torque and fully seat this bolt. The other style is going to be this style. This is conical. Notice how it's flat, not round. You can see very clearly the difference here and these two wheel fasteners. While most VW Audi factory wheels are ball seat, and a lot of aftermarket ones are too, like the wheels I'm running on the R32, there are a lot of wheels that are conical like this, with a cone shape rather than a ball shape. If you don't install conical on conical or ball on ball, you could run into an issue where your wheels aren't gonna be properly torqued. This is a lug nut off a of Mazda Miata. You can see clearly that it's conical. And this is our factory locking wheel bolt. Notice that our extended ones they got that same ball shape, so we're gonna be good to go here. This is something a lot of people don't think of when they're upgrading wheels, wheel spacers, or anything like that. You wanna make sure you get the right bolts for the wheels that you're putting on, conical or ball seat. So there you go, lesson on wheel spacers, what not to use, what to use if you're gonna do it, wheel bolts and everything. Let's go get these put on the car and see how they look. Now I already have the R off the ground, all four wheels. If you guys wanna watch a video on how exactly I did that, I'll be sure to link that up. If you are lifting your car up, we are taking the wheels off, so be sure before you get it off the ground to loosen those wheel bolts up just a little bit so that you're not rocking the car back and forth while it's on jack stands. Or if you have something awesome like an impact gun, 
then it doesn't matter. You can go ahead and zip them off. All right, let's go ahead and get our wheel removed. First, we got to take our wheel bolt caps off. This is the tool that comes with your toolkit. Also, springs from Mark IV seats work pretty awesome, but this is what we got, so this is what we're going to use. Next, we're going to remove our wheel. If you don't have a protective socket like this one, that's cool. I actually like these a lot, so I'd recommend getting one. But if you don't have one, or when we're dealing with our wheel lock, we don't want to just zip this out with an impact gun, so we don't want to risk damaging the wells for our wheel bolts. So what we can do, we can take our wheel bolt, wrap it in a little bit of electrical tape, just get the lip a little bit too. This way we don't have to worry about marring up our wheel at all, or at least reduces the likelihood of it. Don't want to put too much tape on it, otherwise it doesn't fit. Take our wheel bolt, get our impact gun, go ahead and zip it right out. We'll go ahead and take the rest out. Once you get the bolt that's at like the 12 o'clock or so position, grab your wheel hanger and thread that in. If you don't have one of these guys, I'll link them up. You really want to consider getting one. Now we can run the rest of our bolts out. Now rather than our wheel falling all the way off, we can just slide it right off on the hanger. All right, so here's our hub assembly with our rotor. This is really, guys, as simple as just sliding the spacer on just like that. But before we do that, I want to look at a couple of things. Here is our well where our hub is going to ride on. This is why using a hub-centric spacer is so nice. If we use the other style, it's going to be really hard to torque our wheels down properly. As you can see, that doesn't really even come close to fitting. Not only is this not hub-centric, but it probably wouldn't even be lug-centric because it has all this room to move around. Now, hub-centric means that this hub right here is what's going to center the wheel. Lug-centric means the lug bolts or nuts are gonna center the wheel. Luckily for us, these are hub-centric, so we can just slide them right on. But before you do that, you want to make sure this rotor surface is completely clean. We also want to make sure this hub surface right here is completely clean. Rust, dirt, debris, any of that can cause our spacer not to sit properly. What we can also do is take just a little bit of anti-seize around the hub surface and you can even put a little bit on the rotor if you want what you don't want to do is you don't want to put it on the lug bolts that can impact our wheel bolt torque and we really don't want to do that now we'll take our spacer we'll go ahead and install it you can even take a little bit of anti-seize around this part right here of the spacer Make sure it's lubricated. Now, if you're taking your wheels off and rotating them every 5,000 or so miles, probably no need to do that. So that's pretty much it. It doesn't get much easier than that. Let's go ahead and put the wheel on and I'll show you how to torque these down properly. Something else you wanna make sure that you do is clean the mounting surface of your wheel. If this has dirt or debris on it, it can impact how our wheel sits on our spacer or on the hub in general and may cause us not to be able to torque our wheel down properly. Also a good opportunity to clean your dirty wheels which I'll go ahead and do real quick. All right, let's go ahead and put our wheel back on. Now remember, we have our extended length wheel bolts. This is how I put wheels on. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but it's worth it because it basically guarantees that you're gonna properly torque the wheel. We're gonna take our extended bolt, we're gonna start it. We're gonna do that for all five bolts. Now we just want these hand tight. This doesn't matter whether you're putting wheel spacers on with extended bolts or just the factory bolts. You want to just do this hand tight all the way around. Now, while the car is still off the ground, you're supposed to torque the wheels to 30 Newton meters in a star pattern. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five at 30 Newton meters. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, when we lower the car down, we'll torque these to 120 Newton meters, and that'll be our final torque. This initial torque is to get the wheel set properly. Plus, we don't really want to be torquing to 120 Newton meters while we have the car off the ground. Until we get the car on the ground, we're done with the back. Let's move to the front. Now, we're basically going to do the same thing on the front as we did on the rear. The only difference is we're going to use a 10 millimeter spacer on the front, and we used a 15 on the back. Now, you'll notice that it says for MQB front only. The reason you have to go at least 15 in the rear is because of this hub. They couldn't machine it thin enough but still have the hub centric ring deep enough in order to make it fit. And like I said, we want to make sure we're using a hub centric wheel spacer. So we're going to just do a quick test fit. Looks pretty good. Pull it back off, clean our mounting surface, put just a tiny bit of no seize, anti seize on here, a little bit on the face. Remember, not on the bolts. Now, if you want, you can run your wheel hanger off, take your spacer, 
give it some spins. That'll distribute the anti-seize a little bit more evenly. I'm gonna hang my wheel hanger back on because it's gonna make doing this a thousand times easier. Put our spacer on. Make sure that the hub surface on the wheel is also clean, free of dirt, debris, rust, any of that kind of stuff. Again, that can impact how our wheel gets properly mounted. Go ahead and put our wheel back on. Notice I'm holding it at the bottom with my foot. That just keeps it a little bit more stable. And we'll go ahead and start our bolts. We wanna make sure that we use the bolts in the kit for the 10 millimeter spacers. That way we have the right length. To compare, here is a factory length bolt, and here is our one that came with the 10 millimeter spacer kit. Definitely wouldn't get enough thread grab with this one. So you gotta make sure you use the right deal. Take our hanger out, thread our last bolt in, and torque all five of these bolts down to 30 Newton meters. You may have to hold the tire a little bit so it doesn't move around while you're torquing these to 30 Newton meters. All right, now in the front, we actually have another step that we wanna do. We want to make sure that while the car is up in the air, we don't have any clearance issues. Odds are, if there's going to be clearance issues, you won't see it while the car's up in the air. But since we already got it here, it's worth doing just a quick sweep of the steering wheel all the way lock left, all the way lock right, just to make sure. And of course, we're gonna do that again when we get the car on the ground to make 100% sure we don't have any clearance issues. All right, so that's it. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Remember, a little bit of anti-seize, torque the bolts to 30 newton meters all the way around. Then we're gonna put the car on the ground and do that steering wheel sweep again to make sure we don't have any clearance issues. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna roll the car back and forth a little bit. It's gonna settle the suspension out. Let's rotate the wheel lock to lock, make sure that we don't have any clearance issues. Once we confirm no clearance issues, it's time to torque the wheels properly to 120 newton meters. All right, we're gonna torque these in a star pattern just like we did before. This is 120 Newton meters. And of course, same thing in the front. All right, once everything's torqued down and you check to make sure you didn't have any clearance issues, I was going to actually put the wheel caps on these new wheel bolts. But something you wanna be aware of, these do fit, they will work. However, the OEM bolts have this hole in the center of it. What that means is that when it has a wheel cap on it like this, you can use your factory tool, go all the way in and pull the wheel cap off pretty easily. These replacement bolts do not have that hole. So if you're gonna be using these factory style wheel bolt covers, you're gonna either need to get a pick, a really thin pick and get in there to get it out, or maybe the Audi style ones will fit better. But unfortunately, these are probably just gonna be more of a pain in the butt than they're worth. So I'm not going to put them back on the car. All right, so there we have it, a nice and easy install. We learned that these are no good. Don't use this kind, use the hub centric kind, the kind made for your vehicle. Also, I want you guys to do me a favor. If you are installing these wheel spacers, after about 100 miles or so, go back and recheck your torque just to make sure it's still good. Make sure you're using the right wheel bolts. And because we've changed the length of the wheel bolt for our spacers, what I really like to do, and this could be totally like way paranoid thing of mine, but I like to take five wheel bolts and put them in my toolkit. That way, if you get a flat and it, the, for whatever reason, the wheel won't cooperate with the spacer, maybe you have aftermarket wheels and spacers accordingly for those, it's a good idea just to have five extra bolts of the factory length just in case. Go ahead and throw them in your toolkit and you'll never have to worry about it again unless you have to. All right guys, so that's it. I'm gonna wrap it up. Questions, comments, drop it down below. Big ups to Paul and the boys over at Shop DAP for this really great wheel spacer kit. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you again next time.